Hello everyone, my name is Harsh and as I said, uh, I am gonna create a video on Facebook ads in Flutter. Okay, so this is that video and in this video, we will cover how we can add Facebook ads in our application, which packages to use as well as I will show a sample demonstration for two ads mainly in this video. So now you can simply go to Google and search Easy Audience Network Flutter. Uh, this is the package which is helpful to integrate Facebook ads in our application. Now this package is actually forked from Facebook Audience Network. Now when you check out this package, now actually it's quite an outdated package. So due to that reason, the author of this package has updated it little bit to satisfy the current requirements. So this is a pretty good package. Actually, I also use it for the production purpose or to show the live ads. Now, before implementing this package, one more thing, uh, if you want to publish your application to the Play Store, in that case, you have to add an add ID permission in Android manifest for Android 13 or higher. So this is simply that permission that we have to mention. We don't require this permission because this is mainly for Google or AdX ads. So if you are integrating Google Ads, you can add this one uh, for Facebook. This will do the work and without the permission, it will also work. But it is recommended that you should follow the guidelines. Now you can just copy this permission and move to our codes and simply inside this Android manifest that you can see inside Android SRC simply main and then this file. I have already added the permission. OK. Now moving to the dependency, you can simply go to easy audience network and copy this and move to our project and simply add this into your pubspec.yml. So simply below you can see I have already added that for Facebook ads. And one more thing, I have created a file named ad helper. Generally when I work with ads, I simply create a separate file to handle those things. So in that class ad helper, I have created three static functions. Okay, they are generally empty except the first one. In the first one, I am just showing the loading dialog and I am just hiding the loading dialog. Nothing more than that. And one more thing, I am expecting a parameter that is executed on, on complete of that particular thing. Okay, which means when the function completes, I want to execute some codes so those codes can be passed here. Now, moving to our easy audience network, first thing which ad types does Facebook supports? So you may see Facebook does not support app open, which is a very common ad in AdX, but Facebook supports other most common ads, including banner ad. You can see a demonstration here that how banner ad looks also native banner ad, also a native ad. So you may see native ad is quite larger. Okay. So it covers approx half of the screen or 40% of the screen. Now moving to it also supports interstitial ads which we show between the page transitions and it also supports rewarded video ad. Now one thing to keep in mind rewarded video ad does not works with the test implementation. You have to use live ID of Facebook ad to demonstrate or to use this. Okay. Now first and foremost thing if you want to know how the IDs of Facebook ad looks then so you can simply open the Google and search it out Facebook test ad ID and you will mostly find out that Facebook generally don't have much of test IDs. Okay, like Google simply provides a test ID in case of Facebook. What most commonly you will find is in case of test, your ID somewhat includes a hash symbol, uh, which means it can be something like image 16 underscore nine hash. And after that, you can even simply write this your placement ID. So actually, we don't have to worry about the test case because this package automatically handles uh, test IDs for us. Okay, we will uh, have a look at what exactly the test ID looks in this package itself and moving to live ID. So when you are working with production, you actually get IDs like simply a huge string of numbers or something like that. So now keep those IDs aside and moving to the implementation of the package. Now when you move below, you will see the implementation of the package starts with this uh, audience network initialization. Uh, it supports three parameters testing ID uh, we can ignore this we don't require this one test mode uh, this is a quite important parameter and iOS advertising tracking enabled 
so if you are targeting ios and you want to allow tracking of that particular user means what kind of ads the user sees okay the advertisers can keep track of it in that case you can enable it but now we can just copy this code snippet from here and we can move to our ad helper and actually i prefer creating a separate function okay like here static void and i can call it init which means ad helper dot init and inside this i am simply pasting this audience network and i just need to import the audience network so it is not showing that i think i have to type it like this easy audience network actually we need to type easy audience network rather than audience network okay because this documentation is picked from this documentation and the author has changed some things in this so we need to update those as well i can remove the test id because we don't require it uh, i can remove this ios enabled as well uh, what i am actually interested is in this parameter test mode so if you want to see test ads in that case you have to enable test mode or else it will be kind of throwing errors like ads loaded too frequently ad not available etc etc so we need to enable this mode for testing purpose so this is mainly for the testing purpose and comment it okay while making the app live because it is by default false okay so for production applications just comment the code now moving to the initialization so actually i prefer doing this initialization in our main so simply here for initializing facebook ads and we have already written this unsure initialized here so simply here we can simply write ad helper and we just need to import it dot in it and this will initialize ads for us for now simply press control save and actually i have already run my emulator in that i can just see those changes by just rerunning the app from here okay now moving to the implementation of ads so as you scroll down you will see a implementation for a banner ad uh, actually i don't use banner ads now why uh, the reason is banner ad has a low earning has compared to native or native banner ads so that's the reason i generally prefer using them if you want you can use it but moving to the native ads so before moving to the native ad there is something called as interstitial ad it is generally shown between the screens and we can just copy this code snippets from here and move to our code and inside this ad helper uh, i will simply paste those codes here so simply what this code will do is it will load the interstitial ad for us okay and it is passing a test placement id so you can just simply press control and click on this one to see what is actually the test placement id so it is nothing it is just your placement id so it is added with an hashtag while loading the ad in that case it works as a test ad now moving to our implementation so it is creating a interstitial ad object then it is setting a listener to the interstitial ad so if you scroll on this you will see there are many listeners like on loaded on ad clicked uh, when ad impression is counted on error i actually use uh, this three mainly uh, first one is on loaded on dismiss and on error which means i also want to handle errors like i comma e because it provides an status code for the error as well as the error string so simply interstitial error and actually i don't require this log here and on dismissed simply destroy the ad and this is important to show the ad so interstitial ad dot show so when it is loaded simply show the ad and the load function is called here so we are creating the object of interstitial ad we are setting the listener and then we are loading the ad now to fit into our logic we need to show a loading dialog when it is loading and when the loading is done we need to hide that dialog so before showing the ad i just want to hide the dialog okay and on error as well i want to hide that dialog okay now i also want to execute this on complete this is the code executed once the ad is shown so i just want to execute after the ad is shown okay so simply like this and i also want to do it when the error occurs so simply here on complete okay so simply like this and if i wish i can just move it below this hide loading it will work though so simply press control save 
so now we can call this so interstitial ad to show a uh, interstitial ad of facebook so now moving to our codes what i want is when i click on any one of them now i move to a new screen but i want to move with an ad so how we can do that so simply we need to move to our widget in this case and moving to our home card because this is the home card and on tap actually we have passed a function here okay that is our on tap function if we tap here there is something happening here now i just want to move to the screen with an ad so what i will do is i will just cut this function and simply i will create another function because i need to show ad and i will call ad helper and simply show interstitial ad now it is expecting a on complete here which means what should happen on completion i just want to execute this function on completion which means navigating to the next screen so simply control save and i can open my terminal here and simply if i just click on this ai chatbot now you will see a loader shows the reason is we have shown a loader here simply show loading dialog and you will see are uh, the facebook test ad for interstitial is showing here actually it is a multiple interstitial ad okay now with this we kind of completed the interstitial ad implementation yep it's that easy you can go back and you can click any one of them and you will see the interstitial ad shows and done now moving to the next one and i have actually mentioned two ads here one is native ad another is native banner ad uh generally i use both of them i use native banner ad in case i have less space on the screen like here if we have less space i generally prefer native banner but i also want to show you the native ad so how we can show that so you can just move to the documentation you can just scroll down and you will see the implementation for native ad now a guide here native ad horizontal and native ad vertical are only supported in ios for android it only supports native ad so there is a ad type parameter here so for android case it only supports native so we can just copy the code snippets and move to our code and simply here native ad i can paste those codes now there is hell lot of stuff like the color the title color the button color if you want you can customize it i don't want to so i will remove those codes okay now there is something like it have mentioned in height by default it is 250 for native ad and i will prefer using 250 itself because i don't want the ad to be so big and i don't want to give a width because by default it will pick that much width okay infinite and another thing simply a colon here and i just want to replace this print with the logs okay so simply control f and i can just write a log here and simply replace all and okay now there are some more parameters here one is placement id so you can use your ad placement id simply here if you wish uh, if you just click on this one you will again realize that same thing your placement id okay so we can ignore that and moving to the ad type we can specify a ad type for the native ad as well like if we want to show a native banner ad we can use this but for now i'm just using this native ad and here one more parameter if you don't want ad to be refreshed on set state or any such thing you can allow this keep alive to true i'm just removing this because i just want to load a fresh ad on every set state and then there is a parameter keep expanded while loading let's say you have ad on the screen for example uh, this ai image creator is an ad in that case uh, when we set this parameter to true okay in that case what will happen is even if the ad is not loaded it will occupy this much of space and when we set it to false in that case uh, it will only occupy space when the ad is loaded so actually i want it to occupy only when the ad is loaded so i need to mention it to false and one thing that i like a bit about facebook ad it kind of provide an animation okay so they have mentioned expand animation duration actually the spelling mistake is there but leave it okay so i am just uh, increasing its value to 1000 and we will see this effect when the ad is loaded and there are many more parameters like on error what should happen on loaded on click on impression log as well as on the download of the media of the ad so there are just too much parameters just ignore them for now 
and what I want is uh, we need to actually return this native ad to show into our view so simply we can call a return function and I can return a native ad because to load the Facebook ad we need to add into our widget tree on the UI screen then only it will be loaded so now moving to our main screen like home card or let's say home screen I want to implement this so just moving to screens home screen and inside this I want to show an ad let's say I just want to show the ad into bottom navigation so bottom navigation bar and here simply I can just call ad helper dot and simply native ad and this will show the native ad for us so simply here uh, I can call it an ad and now if I just press a control save and open my terminal to see something so you will see the media is loaded and the ad is shown here with some kind of animation and this animation is due to that animation duration that we mentioned there so if we increase it to 2000 it will take two seconds to show this ad so that's also a good thing now one thing you will see the ad is being cut from the bottom of this UI okay you can see it more specifically I think in the dark mode so what we can do uh, the thing that we can do is uh, we can just wrap this ad widget of ours with an safe area widget so actually I prefer doing it inside this so what I will do is I will wrap it with the safe area okay so safe area and you will see it will throwing an error because I can't return a native ad so I am simply returning a widget and simply control save so in this case you will see the ad is shown but it looks decent in this time okay now in this much of content uh, this ad may be looking a bit too big now what if I just want to use a smaller version of the ad so in that case actually I just can copy this function out uh, I can just paste it below and I can change this native ad to native banner ad and I can change this native ad to native uh, banner ad and we need to give a height to this ad so actually native banner I think we have to use native banner 100 so if I just move below uh, we just want to use this one so I can just copy these parameters from here these three parameters are just different so moving to our ad uh, I can just paste those parameters here and this uh, they are mentioning the height for the ad but we also can give the height in the widget or else it will take 250 so since this is a height 100 ad there are even more 120 or 50 I think 100 height is good for us and I am just giving the height 100 here now if I want to show this ad uh, what I will do is I will again go to my home screen let me open my emulator and I will write native banner ad and now if I just simply press control save you will see the ad is actually reduced to a smaller ad so it is happened because we have overrided a view we just need to restart the app to properly load it again so now in this case you will see a small native banner ad is showing here and it looks good so with this we kind of completed the basic ad implementation with facebook ads in our application and i hope now you have a better overview of how facebook ad works so that's it for this video see you in any another video till then bye bye